Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to begin my presentation by congratulations to the United Nations World Tourism Organization for organizing this ISI session. And also we are grateful for inviting the Philippines to contribute in this session. My presentation is focused on strengthening statistics for measuring the sustainability of tourism in the Philippines. My outline of presentation is as follows. First, just briefly on the Philippine economy and the tourism industry prior to pandemic and during the pandemic. Then I will move on to the Philippine national tourism agenda. Then how to demonstrate the Philippines measurement of the sustainable uh, tourism and the tourism satellite accounts. Then I will walk you through on the performance of the tourism industry for 2019 and 2020. And finally, the ways forward. So just a bit of a background about the Philippines. The Philippines is rich in natural resources. We are most popular as tourism destination because of our famous and beautiful beaches and long coastlines and hospitality of the Filipinos. Our economy is attractive to tourists and investors as the Philippines remained strong prior to pandemic with the economy steadily growing at 6.1% in 2019. In 2020, the pandemic posed challenges. We are greatly affected as the economy contracted to one negative 9.6%. Heavily affected is the tourism as the contribution of tourism to the economy prior to pandemic is 12.7% and was reduced significantly to 5.4% due to pandemic. Considering the contribution of tourism to the economy of the Philippines, the Department of Tourism has highlighted tourism in the Philippine national agenda. That tourism is recognized as the engine of investment, an engine of employment, engine of growth, and national development. This is indicated in the various government planning workshop, especially the Philippine Development Plan until 2022 and in the long-term vision of the Philippines until 2040. Another important uh, concern is on, in the integration of tourism in the sustainable development goals. These are the goals eight and 12. Like your country, the Philippines is also committed to global goals for the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030. We saw the importance of information on tourism and such information is being awaited every July of each year when the president reports the Filipinos, the achievements of the present administration during the state of the nation address. The national agenda also supports the sustainable tourism, particularly by the local governments as indicated in the reports of the Department of Tourism. There are more of these examples and are shown in the websites of the Department of Tourism in the regions of the country. We recognize that the that to ensure the support for comprehensive information for the national agenda on tourism, there are tools and standards that make it feasible to put together all this data in the framework and ensure their consistency. Among others, this framework starts with a system of national accounts. Then the system of economic environmental accounting, which is the central framework, and also the ecosystem accounting, the UNWTO recommendations of tourism statistics, 
and tourism satellite accounts, and the statistical framework on measuring sustainability on tourism. We have all these frameworks put in place, and it is very important that we ensure that the data support of these frameworks are available and regularly provided for the Philippines when we started measuring the sustainable tourism and the tourism satellite accounts, which we call the, TS, the TSA, we started this as a research study in 1988 to look at the feasibility whether we can generate the TSA. After 10 years, then we released that in 1999, the first measure of tourism and its contribution to the Philippines. We created the interagency committee, which provide the venues to discuss issues and to resolve them. We formulated the Philippine version of the classification of tourism industries and products, and we endorsed this to the, for the approval of the board. The PSA board being the highest policy-making body on statistics. After which the TSA has been integrated as part of the official statistics and now compiled regularly on an annual basis. We did the revision and rebasing of the TSA as a result of the revision of the national accounts. We also institutionalized the data collection, particularly the surveys of the household visitors on tourism and also the survey of tourism establishments. The, uh, the embassy in the Philippines started in 2017 when we hosted the 6th International Conference on Measuring Sustainability of Tourism. This was participated by 88 countries with over 1,000 participants coming from statistical offices and tourism agencies. More country presentations and sharing were done to create awareness on MST. Also, we participated in international meetings, conferences, and workshops. Mostly these uh, were hosted by the D UNWTO, and uh, this is a venue for us to acquire knowledge and capacitate the compilers of the MST. The PSA and the MST provide information, important indicators that pave the way for the government's better planning of the tourism industry. So under the TSA, we have uh, the 10 important indicators, indicators on inbound tourism, domestic tourism, outbound tourism, inter internal tourism, gross value added of tourism industries, and the direct tourism gross value added, employment in tourism industries, gross capital formation, collective consumption, and also we have other indicators like arrivals, length of stay, daily expenses, and so on. For the MST indicators, we focused on water consumption, energy consumption, carbon dioxide emission, and uh, we are exploring the possibility to develop also the solid weights generated by tourism. The general methodology for the TSA is using the supply and use table or the SUT. The concept of SUT brings back to the system of national accounts what are produced by industries, particularly the tourism industries, are consumed by industries, by the households, by the government, by the tourists. This method adopts the system of national accounts framework, which we consider as the integrating framework or the mother of all the frameworks. To complement the supply and use table, we use also indicator system, which we are generating coming from the administrative based data, from the surveys of households and from the surveys of establishments. In the Philippines, the satellite accounts on tourism monitors 
the major tourism industries like accommodations, food and beverage, transportation services, entertainment and recreation, travel agencies and other services, other country-specific characteristics like shopping, and others like spa, foreign exchange. And these are based on the PSA framework and the Philippine version of the tourism statistical classification. To ensure that the data support to the TSA and MST, as well as advocacy programs are institutionalized for regular compilation of the accounts, the Philippine Statistics Authority, among others, has coordination mechanisms already put in place. Number one, we have the Philippine Statistical Development Program. This provides the list of all the statistical activities and programs that have to be taken by which agency and when we are completing them. Second, we have the Philippine Statistics Authority Board. This is the highest policymaking body on statistics, and it approves methodologies and the new statistical series. Third, we have the Interagency Committee on Tourism Statistics. We have also the Interagency Committee on Environmental Account Statistics. Next, we have the System of Designated Statistics. This is a uh, uh, according to the Executive Order 356 that designates the proponent agencies who are who will be uh, generating the information for tourism. And then we have the regular National Convention on Statistics and the National Statistics Month. Uh, now, uh, let me proceed to present to you the 2019 and 2020 tourism report of the Philippines. Here we can see the effects of the pandemic. Earlier, I mentioned that the COVID-19 pandemic significantly reduced the contribution of tourism to the Philippine economy from 12.8% in 2019 to 5.4% in 2020. Inbound tourism also declined by negative 77.9 and also the inbound tourism exports also declined from 10.8 percent to 2.9 percent in terms of the share to the total exports in 2020 domestic uh, expenditures declined by negative 82.3 percent and unbound, outbound tourism also declined by negative 73.2. In 2020, the most affected tourism industries were transportation services and the entertainment and recreation services. Both of these industries shared more than 50% to the total tourism industries. Passenger uh, employment in tourism industries declined by 18.1%, and the tourism employment actually contributed 12% to the total country's employment. Now, uh, in terms of other industries, passenger transportation and accommodation and food and beverage has the highest share in terms of the employment when we compare this to the other tourism industries. Now, in terms of the investments by the government, tourism fixed capital formation declined by negative 28.8% in 2020, and this shared 11.3% to total gross capital formation. Now, in terms of the consumption of the total government, this is called the tourism collective consumption. This amounted to 81.7 billion in 2020. This consumption covers the current cost of the government, including compensation or salaries and wages of the government working 
in tourism activities or tourism related activities. In addition, indicators that we develop under the MST focuses on water consumption, energy consumption, and the carbon dioxide emission in tourism. And we tried to link them to the total water consumption with other tourism industries and look, look uh, at its uh, share to the combined total consumption within the domestic tourism. This slide now shows that among the tourism industries, accommodation services had the highest water consumption of 79% when we compare this to the total domestic tourism and inbound tourism. Again, accommodation services for tourism consume the, the highest energy consumption at 49% when we compare this to the total energy consumption of the domestic and inbound tourism. Also, the domestic tourism consumed more than 75% or three-fourths of the total water consumption and total energy consumption. So this recorded a consumption share of 79% and 78% of the total water and energy, respectively. For combined domestic tourism and inbound tourism, carbon dioxide emissions from petroleum consumption is higher from those emissions for electricity consumption. Okay, now uh, for the waste forward, we have identified four major activities to further enhance the, the estimation of the MST. And the one, this is to integrate the results of the MST with the existing environment and ecosystem accounts and expand the coverage of the MST for better analysis. Second is to continue advocating the results of the MST to users, mainly for policy development. Third, to explore alternative data sources to be able to enhance the MST compilation, particularly the parameters and assumptions that we use in the present MST compilation. And uh, lastly, uh, we wanted to continue build capacities of compilers, data producers, and data users of MST. And uh, we would like to request technical assistance from the UNWTO for the conduct of country training for inter by the international experts. And this uh, particularly for the Philippine Statistics Authority as compiler of MST. And for the Department of Tourism as major producer and user of MST. So this ends my presentation. Thank you very much and good day everyone.